Thanks for watching and today I would like to show you a very neat fact which makes showing that something is, is a subspace much easier. Namely, I would like to show that the span of any set of vectors is a subspace. So uh, let me uh, first of all give you a little example. For example, I don't know if you remember, but I had this example with the xy plane x, y, 0, where x, y are real numbers. Well, I showed, you know, very pedantically that this is a subspace of R3. And why? Well, now there's an easier way of showing this because h is simply the span of just the vectors 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0. Now, what is again the span? The span is just a set of all linear combinations of 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0. So set of, ex of expressions of the form x times 1, 0, 0, plus y times 0, 1, 0, where x and y are real numbers, and that's precisely the same thing as here. So that's why it's a very cool tool to show that something is a subspace. And now let me actually show this to you. So claim okay, uh, span. Uh, this works for any number of vectors, finite or even infinite. Uh, but let me just show it to you for two vectors just to keep the exposition a bit easier. So let me claim that span of uv is a subspace and again, here, this works for abstract subspaces as well, but let's just, for uh, concreteness, let's just say for Rn, provided u and v are in Rn. And again, span, that span is just the set of linear combinations of u and v. So set of expressions of the form au plus bv, where a, b are reals. Okay, well, and at the same time, let me remind you what a subspace is. Well, a subspace has three components to it, just like R3. Namely, first of all, we have to show that the zero vector is in H. So uh, let's call this H. First of all, show that zero is in H. And zero is just a vector with all components, zero. So the question is, is zero, can you write zero of the form au plus bv for some a and b? Well, indeed you can, just let a and b be zero. So yes, a equals zero and b equals zero because zero times u plus zero times v, well, that's just a zero vector. Indeed, zero is a linear combination of u and v, the trivial one. Second of all, we need to show if u and v are in h, then u plus v is in h. And all this is saying is, if you have a linear combination of u and v, and, an, oh man, I used bad notation, but let's call it a, a w, w, and p, okay. So if w and p are in h, then your sum is in h. Is an H. And all this is saying is simply if you have a linear combo of U and V and you add it to a linear combo of U and V, do you still get a linear combo of U and V? And it turns out yes. So uh, because W is in H, this implies W is AU plus BV. 
for some a and b, and then p is in h, and this implies p is, let's say, cu plus dv. Again, for some a, b, c, d. And then, well, let's see, w plus p, that is a, u plus b, v, plus c, u plus d, v. Well, now we can just put the u's and v's together. So this is a, u plus c, u plus b, v plus d, v. DVD. And notice this is precisely A plus CU plus B plus DV. And the question is, is this a linear combo of U and V? Yes, because this is of the form A squiggled U plus B squiggled V, where A squiggled equals to A plus C and B squiggled is uh, B plus D. So indeed, W plus P is in H. Because in order to be in H, you need to be a linear combo of U and V. And indeed, we've shown that W plus P is a linear combo of U and V. That's the second requirement. The last one is simply, if W is in H, then CW, Bay Area, no, then CW uh, is also in H for all real C, for all C. Well, if W is in H, this means that W is a linear combo of U and V. So AU plus BV for some A and B. And well, then let's multiply W by C, that it's C times AU plus BV. Now, just fold it out, CAU plus CBV can write it like this. And question, is this a linear combo of U and V? You betcha, because this is of the form A squiggled U plus B squiggled V, where A squiggled is CA and B squiggled is CB. And they're all real numbers. So CW is also an H. That's precisely what we wanted to show. We assumed that W was an H, and we wanted to show that CW is also an H. That's why H, which again is the span of U of V, is, satisfies the three requirements of being a subspace, so indeed it is a subspace. In this case, R of Rn, but um, this works again for, for any abstract vector spaces. And it provides us with a very nice way of checking uh, that the span is a subspace. And by the way, so the converse is true because if a subspace is a span of something, then, sorry, the span of something is a subspace, well, it turns out any subspace is also the span of something. Namely, you just take the span of all the vectors in it, and then, yeah, it becomes a a subspace. It's a span of a big thing, but it still shows that subspaces are also of the form span of anything. Or you just take a basis, you know, span of the basis, so that's nice. But that's for something else. Uh, all right, so I hope you like this span subspace excursion. If you want to see more math, please click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel.